What's up, Soup Squad? Today, I wanted to bring you my second skill guide on air realistic battles. The first one was defensive flying, check that one out if you haven't already. In this one, I'll be going over the importance of, and how to, climb and have good positioning. Good positioning is essential to success in air realistic battles, whether you're flying a bomber, fighter, or a ground pounder. So essential, in fact, that you can carry an entire match alone if your positioning is good enough and your patience is tall enough. I'll go over how I find success positioning myself in all types of planes. The focus is, however, of course, on fighters. This is because I find fighters have the highest potential for RP and SL, and I have the most fun in them. This isn't to say you shouldn't use other planes for these purposes, so I will go over them, but getting 7 kills in a fighter will be more rewarding than bombing a few bases. One disclaimer here, gameplay in jets is a little bit different. Some of the stuff I'll say is somewhat applicable to at least early jets, but just so I don't confuse anyone, I'm gonna say this video is applicable to props only. With this in mind, sit back, relax, and enjoy getting rid of those skill issues. Positioning is extremely important to success in air realistic battles. Climbing is a sort of cheat code to having the best positioning. If you're far enough above the enemy, there's not a single thing they can do to you. I try to start every match with the goal of being above the enemies in almost any prop I fly. You'll have free reign to boom and zoom whomever you'd like or drop your bombs wherever. Some planes climb better than others. If you're not in a good climbing plane, you should be side climbing until you have enough altitude to be effective in the match. In my opinion, increasing your potential to impact the match is the biggest reason to climb. Moreover, having at least a little bit of altitude will give you options. If you need to escape, you can dive away, and a lot of the times people won't blow their altitude advantage to follow. If you're in a faster plane, you can dive away, try to get them to chase you, and you'll have more energy even if they were above you to start, that is, assuming your altitude is equal. If your engine gets shot out, you might be able to glide back to base if you have enough altitude. At the end of the day, any maneuver or tactic you want to engage is gonna require energy. Aside from having free reign to boom and zoom, if you don't want to be constantly traveling in a straight line at max speed, getting altitude is a way to store away energy that can be accessed later on in the match when it's necessary. Climbing is different for each plane you'll fly. I'm not going to go over every single plane and how to climb in it for the sake of time. If you want specifics, comment some planes you'd like me to make videos about. I will say that it's obviously important to know your plane. For fighters, I'll throw in here that I personally am a believer in slapping in a 15 to 20 degree climb at the start of the match and watch a YouTube video for a few minutes, <coughs> Nimbo Soup, and it works a lot of the time for me. But of course, this is not ideally how it should be done. Each plane has an optimal climb speed that you should be familiar with. In order to climb optimally, you should actively adjust your angle to match this optimal speed throughout your climb. This will result in the most altitude in the least amount of time. Another important point for fighters is if you're not in one of the best climbing planes, or at least a good climbing plane, you definitely should be side climbing. There is no point in climbing straight in in a P-47 against BF-109s that'll be 2.5 kilometers above you anyways when you reach the furball. Shout out to Reese, I respect that man so much for having that much patience. For bombers, I recommend climbing in at least a slight climb, somewhere between 5 and 10 degrees, straight towards your bomb targets. This will make it more difficult for interceptors to reach you, especially if they don't climb, and fighters will barely have a chance, at least before you get your first bomb load off. The most important point is to know your plane and what speed you should be climbing at. Besides climbing, there's other ways to position yourself in ARB for success. Generally, if you'd like to last until the end of the match, it isn't a great idea to fly straight towards the enemy's runway. Doing this, you'll make yourself a target. At the start, in fighters, I like to climb a bit to the side from the enemy runway, and either flank or come up behind the furball once I've reached my altitude. I never really like to be the first one involved in any action. This makes you an easy target for any other plane in the match that isn't involved in any, which at the start is literally every other plane on the enemy team. It's significantly easier to take down planes that are busy trying to deal with something else. This brings up the point of choosing your targets wisely. 
you should be selecting targets that won't blow your advantage upon attacking them. It's important to get kills for sure, but it's even more important to stay alive. From what I've noticed, focusing on staying alive will net you more kills per match than trying to go for as many as you can. This can probably be attributed to being smart with your energy and positional advantages. It is not worth blowing these for one kill when maintaining these could have gotten you multiple kills over a few more minutes. For bombers, I really just do what I can to get my bombs off. A slight climb will be the biggest help for this. You'd technically have a better chance if you flew off to the side before flying straight in, giving all the enemies a chance to lose altitude to engage your teammates, but for me, this would take way too much patience, so I'm not going to recommend it. Just do what you can to get your bombs off. Ground pounders are a bit different. For these planes, you'll obviously be on the deck anyways, which is why I've saved them for this section. You can either rush straight in and get as many ground units as possible before you inevitably get sent back to hangar, or you can play the long game. To do this, fly off to the side for a bit. Let the match develop, maybe there's some ground units way off to the side somewhere that you can go harass. Once everyone seems busy, stay as far away from them as possible and go get your ground units. You must keep your head on a swivel and react to anyone coming for you before they get close to you. Your best chance is to either head on them, fly to some teammates and bait for them, or just use that as an opportunity to go back to base and rearm. Please don't camp your airfield. But if you could use some more ammo, I don't personally see the harm in going to get more. Ground pounding is honestly fun, but it can be difficult to make it until the end of the match. Here we are, the end of another Nimbo Soup video. I hope everybody enjoyed and was able to learn something. If you did, leave a like, a comment, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you don't miss any of my content, and while you're at it, consider checking out my other content. Also check out the description for stuff like my Discord server and my Shorts channel. While you're down there, at the time this video is posted, I should be live on Twitch doing a 24 hour stream, so come check it out. Anyways, I'll shut my stupid, disgusting, dirty mouth now. Have a good day or night everyone, and you all know the deal. This is Nimbo Soup, Nimbo signing out.